What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome in. Roel, what's going on? D-Lynn, I'm seeing everybody. D-Lynn, can you hear me okay? Um, are we are we coming through? Uh, I see that we're on Facebook, I think. Uh, Roel's on YouTube, can hear me, hopefully. Let me, let me know, guys, if you guys can't hear me we'll make some adjustments uh my man steve great to see you man um hope your hope your afternoon has been lovely lisa what's going on thank you for sharing uh dland okay cool cool so we are live welcome in everybody to the performance medicine show um uh, <laughs> i do think we're in for a surprise tonight you you and me both steve uh i think i, I think you and i both are in for a surprise uh, Anthony, what's going on? Jack on YouTube. What's going on, man? Great to see you. Uh, thank you guys for coming in. We're going to let a few people, uh, hop onto the, to the live show here. Uh, as you guys know, uh, who've been here, this is the performance medicine show. This is where we answer your health and wellness questions. We do this every single Tuesday at seven o'clock. Uh, we go for about an hour, try to get to as many questions as possible. Bianca, what's going on? Great to see you, Terry. Merry Christmas. Uh, thank you, Jack, on Facebook for watching. Uh, great to see everybody. Uh, Doc's getting ready. I know he's got some things he wants to share. Um, Deborah, what's going on? Great to see everybody. If you're here with us, uh, say hello. Uh, love interacting uh, uh, with you guys here live. Um, golly, we had, a, as you guys know, the Performance Weekly goes out every single Tuesday uh afternoon and today was a uh, we had a great uh day on the podcast on youtube um this went out today on the common sense md uh dr rogers talks about the seasonal affective disorder uh, sad uh, which is kind of a depression that comes with fall and winter uh he goes over um you know ways to kind of diagnose it treatments symptoms uh, prevention, things that you guys can do this winter uh, to kind of protect uh, your emotional health. So really, really timely episode, especially here in East Tennessee. Um, it's been extremely gloomy. Uh, I, I feel like today was the first sun I've seen in a in, in a while now. So, uh, so be sure to check that out. Share that with uh, a family member or, or friend who who needs to see it. Uh, on the on dive into diet with my man Lucas Schmidt, our nutrition coach at Performance Medicine, he talks about the dark side of oils. Uh, we had, the first episode we did on oils was about the oils that he likes, things like the extra virgin olive oils and how to how to use that. This is the not so good stuff. So be sure to check out Lucas and dive into diet in that episode uh, where we kind of dive further into oils. And this one was was super fascinating. I had a good friend of ours, Dr. Michael Rice, uh, talk more about the Avacyn. This uh, the Avacyn has come up a couple different times on the show, so we decided to have uh, Dr. Rice come on and uh, talk about the Avacyn. Um, talk about how that how it actually works. Um, very interesting, really interesting. If you're interested in the in the Avacyn, um, definitely check that out. It's worth the time. Uh, really in depth there. Uh, uh, around the Avacyn. And then we've got cooking classes with Lucas. Um, tomorrow, December 14th, is in fact sold out, uh, the Healthy Hearty Italian. Uh, so uh, our next one is December 21st, and I think there's a couple spots left, so be sure to call the Johnson City office. Uh, you can see the number down there below. Uh, or if you just want if you, if you want a spot, let us know in the comments uh, for those with us here live tonight. Uh, I'll make sure you get in. Um, like I said, Healthy Hardy Italian is sold out tomorrow, uh, but there are some spots available for December 21st. So far, that's been a huge hit. Uh, thank you guys uh, for attending that if you have. Um, all right, I think we're I think we're getting close to ready to go. Let's see here. Are uh, we ready? Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> What's going hey, on, man? Nothing. How's your day? Uh, it's been wonderful. I've had such a good day, actually. It, it, it's been 
Uh, it's been sunny. Uh, I went out and, and actually put my sunglasses on. Uh, wow. It's been the afternoon. first time in a week. It's been the first yeah. time in a week. Yeah. So Wonderful. it's been a, it's been a fun day. How's your day been? It's been really good. Really busy. You've got your hair parted the same way. I see. So it looks good. You, you're parting your hair the other way these days. I'm training it. I'm training yeah. my hair. And, uh, so far it's, I, I really feel like it's working. I'm getting great feedback, uh, from, from the people with us live. Ben, I'm going to pull out something here that you're going to love. It's, um, eggnog. I'm going to drink eggnog tonight because I've learned a great, I only drink eggnog once a year, you know, but this season I've found this Homestead Creamery A2, A2 eggnog, all natural. You know, I don't, I don't drink milk really because I don't tolerate it very well, but this stuff is great. And because it's A2 made from a different kind of cow, it works great with my digestive system. It, this is, is not an what? advertisement. I just, I'm just drinking it right now. So uh, because one reason, because I want to get this out, here's my Christmas mug. You like that? <laughs> but it's really tasty. Really good. I don't even like eggnog, but I like this. But no, I want to, if Steve Nice is on, Steve I've is got in here. To show him. Of course, I've got my own. I love honey, raw, natural, local honey, which I eat daily. But I have something special to put it on tonight, and that's. And look, look at that, guys. It's my first completed, really finished by myself, uh, sourdough bread. That is some sourdough bread right there. Yeah. Goodness. It looks really good. It's really good. I've already tasted it. I I'm impressed. Loaves. Made two loaves, but I'll put honey on it and it'll be good. You're getting some great. Bianca Bianca says it looks amazing. Um, it is I, good. I think it looks amazing. Um, it's good. Yeah. Deborah's thinking it's it's wonderful. So I'm super proud of you. How, how, how long did that take? Two days. See? Steve's saying that's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it turned out great. You know, it takes, you have to get the stuff ready the night before and then you bake it the next day. But um, it's, it's an art really. And I turned out to be an artist. So I didn't know I had that in me. <laughs> uh, how was the experience? It was fun. It yeah. was fun. It was really great. It's good for me who can't cook an egg to, to do something like that. You know, it just gave me a good feeling of satisfaction. Are you going to? You know? It may prevent the winter blues. That's why I'm hoping it'll prevent seasonal affective disorder, which I talked about today on the podcast. I'm hoping it'll prevent that because otherwise I'm kind of prone to it. I like that. I think that's a great game plan. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, guys, if you if y'all have any ideas for uh, for this winter, you know, things to combat uh, seasonal affective disorder. Uh, put them in the comments for people because I, I think it's healthy for uh, for us to come together on these Tuesday nights, come up with different things that we can do to take care of our emotional health as well as our physical health. Uh, Doc here's uh, kind of taking up sourdough bread. I know he's into the guitar. Uh, if you have any things that, things that you like doing, uh, indoor pickleball is a big thing. I haven't done it yet, but but I know that's going to be I love pickleball. Uh, cool. Uh, Motaz is in here. What's going on, Motaz? Great to see you. Um, all right, so we, we should get into the show. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. we got some great questions that came in. Um, and, and guys, as you know, uh, on the Performance Medicine Show, we answer questions that came in throughout the week on email, uh, or on the different social channels. If I missed you, uh, I'm extremely sorry. Um, you can email me right now, I'll kind of have my, my eye on it, um, as we go through the show. Uh, but if you don't mind, just if you have a question, put it in the comments and we'll, we'll get it uh, on the second latter part of the show and uh, we'll get to all, all the different questions tonight. Um, this is a very um, specific uh, bioidentical hormone replacement uh, question, which I really appreciated. Um, I know this is going to help uh, quite a few people. Um, please explain how we should apply the BHRT cream on inner thigh at night if also wanting to apply lotion on legs. Uh, this time of year, lotion is a must, but just not sure how if this can be layered either before or after the BHRT T cream. Uh, really That's good a great question. question. That's a great question because some people that don't absorb the cream really are doing it because they're using lotion beforehand. So, you know, use the, the hormone cream first 
on your inner thighs of my favorite place to have people put it, but um, and rub it in for a couple minutes. And remember to alternate sides because, um, you know, it has testosterone in there most of the time. So it could grow hair if you put it in the same spot month after month after month. So I would wait before you apply the lotion at least – I'd probably put it on there an hour before I'd put the lotion on top of it and then, okay. then feel free to, but um, you could probably do it sooner, but because it really absorbs in about, it gets in there probably within 20 minutes. So, uh, but people have different absorption rates and people absorb differently anyway. Um, so make sure you check your levels and um you know, and if the cream is not absorbing, if you're not getting good levels on your, labs are, you know, if you're not getting symptomatic relief, then you might consider pellets. Um, those are still my favorite way to deliver bioidentical hormones or pellets, but, um, but that's a great question. Yeah. So put your, your, uh, hormone cream on first and wait a little while and then you can, and then you can also apply lotion over it. Good How question. would you alternate, uh, daily, uh, from one leg to the next? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can remember it's not going to, you have to do it on the same spot for months, probably to get a little hair growth there, but I have seen it. So move it around. Um, you know, you can even put it on the back side of the buttocks, you know, move it around. Works good. Some people put it behind their knees. Um, so you can't go wrong with really with how you're applying it. Just make sure you don't apply it, uh, above the waist. Um, on the chest area. Really, as far really, as the cream, some people put, uh, they'll put oils on their wrist and, and but I don't like to get it too close to the chest, especially. Really great strategic question there. Thank you for, uh, for putting that in. I see, uh, Robin Riddles in here, uh, from our Knoxville oh, hey, office. So good to see you. Thank you for hanging out with us this evening. I hope the, the house is going, uh, going great. I'm sure you're taking a break right now and Aaron's, uh, Aaron's working on something, I'm sure. Um, all right, let's get to the to the next question. Let's see, where am I at? Uh, this is a berberine question. Would you recommend berberine for everyone or just someone who is struggling with high glucose numbers? If so, what brand berberine do you like? I don't see one from Life Extension, and I got another question around berberine as well. So uh, let's let's focus on berberine for the next couple minutes. Yeah, I put a patient today on berberine uh, because their A1C was 6.3. You know, I usually use it for people that are pre-diabetic or have insulin resistance, maybe overweight. So you don't have to be a diabetic to take berberine, which is kind of a natural metformin-like drug without the side effects, especially the GI side effects that you'll get from metformin. I have had a couple people get a little... Uh, stomach upset with just berberine and I, and um, I need to get the, the brand that I use. Um, I don't know why I was thinking of life extension, but I'll get Katie on here and she'll come up with the answer on that. What, where we order ours from, but um, you know, you should probably just take one pill a day. I'm not even sure about the milligrams on that right now, but um but yeah, definitely for people with high glucose numbers. Um, otherwise, yeah, if you don't, if you have, if you're doing great on everything, you know, you don't need to take an extra supplement. So I like to use supplements if they're going to work, but there's no reason to take it. It's just more money. So, you know, save your money and get some good food. Um, but I'll try to find out the, the um, brand name that we use in there because it's, uh, what it's we'll do very effective. We'll, we'll get the, the name brand because I got another question here around brand and dosage of uh, berberine. But on this same topic, uh, I want to ask, uh, would it be too much to take the supplement berberine with the ozempic slash semaglutide? Is mm -hmm. that something? So you mm -hmm. would still recommend that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They work in completely different ways. So it's sure it's fine. Uh, you're not going to get hypoglycemic doing that. At least I've never seen that. Um, but yeah, it's a good combination. And I got another question around what about metformin with Farxiga? 
Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, Farsiga is a in a new class of medicines for diabetes, and um, it's really a what it does is prevents absorption of the glucose um, into your bloodstream. You just pee it out. Um, there's two of them that do that, Bur Bur uh, not berberine, but Farsiga and Jardiance. Um, so they both work pretty well. They're very heart protective too. So I use a lot of combinations with that. So you can use metformin and uh, Farsiga or Jardiance. You can even use it with Ozempic or Mongero. So a lot of times you use combinations that work in different ways and it really is very effective. Um, if you can just use one, fine but a lot of diabetics need more than one plus remember they need a low carb diet too um i had a guy today that's been a diabetic for years and now he's on nothing because he's lost 80 pounds even his sleep apnea went away his high blood pressure went away his high cholesterol he feels like a million dollars and here's another i don't know if i told this patient story or not um but he, he was another one that went to his doctor for follow-up for just a routine physical. And his doctor did not say anything about his 80 pound weight loss. And uh, <laughs> he was really upset about it. He says he'll never go back to that doctor. That's yeah. unbelievable. Like how can you not say something about that? I know. I, I just found that dumb. Found him. Maybe they're too busy with thinking about other stuff like getting codes in and things for the insurance companies. I don't know, but at least you should have acknowledged it and a good pat on the back. And you know, you're off your message, you're down 80 pounds, and your doctor doesn't even mention it. Um, anyway. Real quick, let, let's stay on the berberine uh, track for D Lynn. Uh, what's the best time of day to take berberine, morning or night? I like it around supper time. You know, okay. same time I would tell you if you if you take one metformin, that'd be my favorite time with supper. And um, if you're taking them together, would you take them both at the same time with supper? You can, yeah, it's not gonna hurt you. All right, Dylan, thank you for putting that in there. Um, okay, and we're we'll uh, we'll get the brand of of berberine here in just a minute. And you can um, always play around with it if you really want to get. Everybody's a little different on absorption rates. So a great way to test a lot of things like that are like timing of medications and vitamins is to get a, a continuous glucose monitor and try it at different times and see how your, your sugar responses are. Even eat something while you do that freestyle Libre on your arm. You, you can do instant tracking of your blood glucose number so you can kind of Say, hey, I took that berberine at, at night and my sugar didn't run up in the night. It didn't run up in the morning. Or, you know, I took it in the morning my whole, you know, my blood sugars are stable the whole day. So a great way to see what's going on with your systems is to wear a glucose monitor for a couple of weeks. With the key, I did it. I loved it. With the, like, key marker for berberine and uh, metformin be the blood sugar level or would it be like cravings? Um, well, blood mark would be the, the, uh, blood sugar levels and then right. ultimately an A1C, which is a three month measure, but you always, you know, go how, by how you feel as well. If you, if you don't crave it, then you're bringing down that insulin resistance. Your insulin number is coming down. Remember when you take, when you have high insulin levels, you crave carbs and you store belly fat. Mm. I mean, if any non-diabetic like us took an insulin shot, like Kelly and Andy have to do, you know, we'd eat everything in the house. Mm. Um, that's why some bodybuilders take it because, you know, they eat more with it and it, it really um, in a way helps them build muscle because they eat a lot of protein and it gets into the muscle quicker with insulin. It's a terrible idea to do for non-diabetics. Terrible because it's really dangerous, but I've, I've heard of bodybuilders doing this to, to gain muscle, believe it or not. It's a very powerful hormone. Real quick, let's um, let's get this for Bianca here. Any side effects from berberine other than possible stomach upset? I saw one patient get a little nausea on it. Um, but it's not like metformin where you have to, you know, if you have compromised renal function, kidney function, you, you shouldn't take uh, metformin. 
Um, and you know, like metformin also, if you have a contrast dye study with an x-ray, you should not take metformin for a couple of days. Uh, enzymatic, here's, here's the form of berberine. Oh, nice. Right here. Uh, for the people listening on the podcast, that is Enzymedica, E-N-Z-Y-M-E-D-I-C-A. That's the berberine. What's the what's the, the dosage there? Um, on this, it's three times a day. I just take it once a day. But to work best three times a day, and it's 500 milligram. Um, so 500 milligrams, three times a day, and you can kind of take it. Doing so slow. Start at one and then go, going up to three times a day. All right. Uh, and Katie's saying that's the old berberine. We now have the brand now. So, oh, okay. uh, there is another brand called now that we're having in the office and that's one to two times a day. Uh, Katie is saying that right there. Uh, one okay. to two times a day. I, I'm assuming it's still 500 milligrams uh, for all the, the berberine folks out there. And that is the now brand. Um, okay. And let's answer Glad this. Glad to know that. Yeah, this is stuff I've had around for a while that Jenny just brought down. Thank you. But uh, So we use now. Okay. Now is a good now, brand. Now Now's in the office. Um, Allison's asking, are you able to get a freestyle Libre without being a diabetic? Uh, yeah. It's a great question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and, and answer that. You real can, quick. yeah. You know, you can get a coupon, and the pharmacist will be glad to print this up for you, or you can go online and get it. But um, if you have any kind of insurance, maybe besides Medicare, um, you can you can get a two week sample for free if they honor that coupon. Now, if they don't, then you could always pay for it, but. Um, but for two weeks, you've almost got a free pass. And that's usually as long as you need it if you're not a diabetic. But um, I haven't had anybody really question it as far as the, the pharmacies go. You may run into, into problems. I never say never with pharmacies because, you know, they, they change the rules all the time with insurance companies. But all I can say is try to get it, you know, that coupon and, and give them your insurance. And then if, if they just want, or you want to do it for longer than two weeks, the free two weeks and go to target, because I think you can get one for about 80 bucks. Yeah. For some reason I have 89, $90 in my head. And, and that lasts you what? Two, two weeks. Two as weeks. Well? Yeah. It's a good um, two weeks. And, and what you're saying, if you're a non-diabetic, that two weeks is really, you know, the, that's all the, you need. That's all you need. Yeah. Katie's saying cash pay for uh, Libre is under two hundred for two for uh, under two hundred dollars for two weeks, uh, and that's from Max uh, in uh, Kingsport, or it seems that's where she got hers. Thank you for putting that in there, Katie. Yeah, she wore one, I think. But yeah, try Target. I think they're yeah. a lot cheaper. But um, let's get to a let's go to a Coloidos. <laughs> I was doing so good with my pronunciation tonight until you say this. silver thoughts on colloidal colloidal silver. Uh, does it, <laughs> that is a hard one. That's a tongue twister. Uh, does it colloidal. help against viruses? Uh, you've talked in the past a little bit about uh, colloidal silver. What, why don't you tell I us? Like, what I like silver. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely known to be antibacterial, but it's thought to be antifungal and, and antiviral as well. It's been used for decades and decades and decades as an antibiotic before antibiotics really came on the scene. So it's definitely um, protects against bacteria. And there's a lot of evidence that it does against um, viruses as well um, as fungus. But um, it's just a really, it's kind of controversial because the drug companies don't like it, even though, one of the major drug companies named Pfizer makes it in the form of silvadine. And we use that as a prescription uh, burn topical medication. Interesting. Um, it definitely works. I mean, silvadine is the burn cream that we use um, for decades and decades. And it's really silver, um, small particles of silver, nanoparticles, that means you can't see it with the naked eye that is uh, 
combined with a, a sulfur salazine. Uh, it's a, a member of the sulfur family. So topically, it works really well. You know, there's there's not as much evidence that it that it works when you swallow it. To, I mean, there's a lot of claims on cures everything from Lyme to everything to cancer. You know, I really don't believe that, but definitely for a topical, and I like it also for um, for sinuses. You know, I think it really helps as a nose spray. You can also spray it in your throat. Um, so I think it works for acute situations. You know, I'm not sure that I, I don't think I'd recommend it taking it daily forever to protect yourself. I'll use it as treatment mm -hmm. uh, because there is a condition where you could get too much silver in your system. It's called argyria. And it's where you may get a, a permanent uh, bluish tint to your skin, um, even your gums and tongue and, and all. And if you took a ton of it, you could it could be hard on your liver and kidney. But um, it's just an interesting thing. But I think it works as a fantastic uh, antibiotic and probably antiviral, antifungal um, medication. I like the topical. I like the nose spray. I think it works great for MRSA. Um, I certainly use it. If I get sick, I'll start using it as well as the co-fix. I use, I use both. You know, oh, just kind of knock it out. Speaking of Cofix, we're getting some questions uh, on Facebook uh, around Cofix. Where where do people get that if they're not around one of our offices? You could order it off of, uh, Amazon, I'm sure. And it's just Cofix is the brand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wanted to make sure I got that in there. And if you're close to an office, I, I believe they're then they're in all of our offices, or just they should uh, be. You no, know, you may ask Katie about that, but uh, okay. it should be in all our offices now. But it's we can't keep it in. Especially, okay. you know, right now with all this stuff going on, you need you need it in your household. If it's uh, safe, if, if our offices are sold out, look look it up on Amazon. Uh, put that as a part of your uh, home medical kit. Uh, Katie's saying that um, they are in the offices and available on Amazon's and Amazon and Max. Uh, okay. Thank you for that, Katie. Uh, yeah, they've been backwards crazy. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we get some more in. Um, I know you've been talking quite a bit about it. Uh, let's go to let's go to another question because uh, we're getting some questions coming in the comments as well. So if you have a question, guys, for Dr. Rogers, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, like I said earlier, this is the Performance Medicine Show for the people who are uh, just joining us. Welcome in. Uh, we're taking live questions here uh, with Doc, and I'm going to go to uh, a BHRT question. I heard a hormone specialist podcaster say that using progesterone as part of your BHRT every day post menopause can over time suppress estrogen and then affect progesterone receptors. Therefore, the progesterone part should be cycled in certain days of the month. I don't think you agree with this. Would love to know why. This is a really Great question. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? That is a great question. Yeah. You know, I'm not against it at all. And then women that are still having periods, I definitely will cycle it. Um, you know, the we use a, a low amount of progesterone or maybe not any the first half of the month and second half we add progesterone. So if you're having a cycle, fine. And even some women, I'll still do that if they're, you know, 60 or 65, 70, because they want to have a period. But you remember when you cycle something, you're going to probably have a period. Not many women like that past menopause. But um, and it's true that, you you know, progesterone brings estrogen down. They kind of work a balance. You know, one goes up, the other comes down. So you need them. You need both. Even if you have a, don't have a uterus, I still think you need progesterone. That, you know, a lot of your gynos say you don't because, you know, you can use unopposed estrogen because you don't worry about uterine cancer and progesterone, you know, lowers the risk of that when you have a uterus, but really progesterone has about 200 functions in the body and it's needed. Now you're right too. You can get a little tolerant to anything, including progesterone. So what I usually recommend is that you use it six days out of the week instead of seven. You know, most people kind of do that anyway because they'll forget, but, um, I mean, it's not going to hurt you. You're going to be checking levels and seeing how you feel. But um, 
But yeah, a lot of a lot of people think you should just cycle it all the time. And you know, I've been to many um, lectures and done a pretty in-depth uh, study on it. So it's you know, you have your both your camps, um, but most women that I know that are way or past menopause and don't want to have a chance on having bleeding again will just take it six nights out of the week if they're doing their cream. Um, and if they do a pellet, take the progesterone six nights a week orally. It's the only oral hormone that I like is natural progesterone. Remember, it's not medroxy progesterone. Um, it's a completely different um, substance. But, uh, but yeah, you've got your both your camps um, that say you ought to just cycle everybody. But um, it does mimic you know, the natural ones. But again, we're not overdosing women with hormones and we're keeping an eye on that balance mm -hmm. as well. When, great, great question. Really good when question. When they're talking about cycling, what are they saying? Are they saying like take a whole month off of it or? No, they're talking about using the uh, different doses of probably progesterone at different times during the month. Oh, uh, like okay. in a typical cycle, the first half is more estrogen dominant. Uh, and the second half is more progesterone dominant. So then you stop them, have a period, and then you start it back up uh, after the period stops. Um, but I mean, even like birth control pills, uh, which are synthetic, you know, sometimes they'll use the same rationale. But a lot of your gynos will just give you continuous birth control pills and you never have a period and they think that's fine too but um so yeah so just do whatever's most you're most comfortable with certainly um having any kind of hormone um is postmenopausal is better than having none um a lot of women i will put them on a higher dose of progesterone uh in those perimenopausal uh, ages hmm. great question really great question there thank you so much for putting that in uh, all right guys that's going to do it for the questions that came in throughout the week uh we are going to jump into the comments now if you have a question for dr rogers go ahead and put it uh in the comments i'm going to see um who i see here um see if i can find a question um, i'm going to go to vicky here Guys, if you have questions, go ahead and put it in the comments for Doc. Uh, we're going to get to all of them tonight. Vicki's asking, what is recommended for prevention and lessen the severity of kidney stones? Uh, great question. Really great question. What's your thoughts on this? Uh, number one, don't take any calcium. Don't get your vitamin D levels too high. Definitely not over 100. Drink a lot of water. Avoid carbonated beverages. Avoid tea. Um, and gosh, I had a patient last week that had a uric acid stone. You know, they're, they're mostly calcium oxalate, but um, this was a uric acid stone mm. um, because he took a picture of it. I wish he'd brought it in. I could have analyzed it and sent it off, but it just looked odd for a stone. And um, so I, I thought, you know, this is a uric, I think this is uric acid stone. So I checked. Um, uric acid level is really high. So I started that patient on allopurinol. Um, but there's another one, if Katie's still on here, that unfortunately she tends to get them. And there's a, there's a compounded stuff that they make at max for her that she says works pretty well. She'll flip it on there in a minute, I'm sure. But she claims that that helps. One thing is stay hydrated. Mm. I mean, we see, we see kidney stones precipitate more in the hot weather when people are dehydrated. Uh, so don't take a calcium supplement either. Um, that, that makes it worse. Um, and when you do take vitamin D, remember to take it with vitamin K as well. That way the calcium would go in your bones, not places you don't want it. But um, before the night's out, I'm going to try to get Katie to put this kind of odd supplement that, uh, that she takes for it. I can't recall it right now. Um, but she says it's cut down on the amount that she has to take. And if you do get a kidney stone, then, um, 
you know, a lot of times I use the drug Flomax to help you pass it. It's amazing how hard those stones can be to pass and how tiny they are to cause that incredible amount of pain. Yeah. Um, but and sometimes it runs in families. There's no known explanation about why they get it. But um, in any event, I hope that helps you. I'm going to put this in here uh, just from Trevor because it's, it's timely with what we're talking about here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on potassium yeah. citrate supplementation specifically for, for prevention of kidney yeah, stones? I should have mentioned Yeah, A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, I think it Trevor dilutes them out had, a little bit. Had surgery Friday, lithotricity and uh, uretoscopy. I'm sorry, Trevor, if I mispronounced that. Uh, he wasn't able to pull a stone to test if I'm unsure if mine are oxalate or uric in nature. Um, They're probably oxalate, but I sure can, you can do a blood test for uric acid that give you a clue. But you're right. The definitive thing is sending that stone in. Um, uh, but, Trevor, uh, thank you. Thank you for putting that in there, man. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, get back up here. Where am I at? Let's see if I'm missing. Let's get to ACE performance picks. My guy, uh, for those prone to an elevated hematocrit with testosterone treatment, can the body eventually regulate itself and bring the hematocrit down without periodic therapeutic blood donations? Great question. Probably not. If you're keeping, if you're staying on the testosterone, Probably not. Um, remember, always hydrate because people that are dehydrated or if they smoke, their hematocrit's going to be up anyway. So, um, you know, some people just bump that crit up a lot and they have to donate. That's a definitive way to get rid of it. Now, you know, there's other things to think about too. And I'm, I think I need to do a podcast on this, but when you start looking into things like ferritin levels and all, um, it's really interesting that like the copper and the zinc and how vitamin A comes into that and all. I'm going to do a special podcast. It's, it's too deep to get in right here. But um, other things to, to look at, you might even want to get a vitamin blood level to see where things are, like your C and your ferritin and your vitamin A. Um, but another thing that I've done, like if you're getting testosterone shots, you're more likely to pop your crit up. So in those cases, a lot of times I'll do a, a pellet and it may not happen, or I'll switch to testosterone and nanthate or the blend, and there's a little less chance for that. But um, you got to just see what happens. But uh, that's a great question too. Man, we get a lot of good questions in here, Ben. What's the what's the topic? I'm going to write that down just so we just so I make sure we don't forget for the common sense. Oh, well, ferritin levels uh, – which high iron levels, um, blood donation, copper, vitamin A, how that all interacts. Got it. Uh, um, thank you so much uh, for that question. Ace performance picks. Um, let's get. Uh, and that's to, a great pick, by the way. Those picks are amazing. They are great. I'm they are you, great. Ben, I got one today. I wish I'd have brought that down. That is the thickest pick I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's just, it's about that thick. It's amazing. Well, I've never seen anything like it. Um, we talked a lot about guitars today. You so know, cool. One of my favorite subjects. And he sells those picks all over the world. Um, plus, he pay, plays in a band. That's my ultimate goal, really, is to play in a band. Uh, who's who's going to put you in your, in their band? And what do you got to play? That's a good question. That's a good question. What are you play? I just like to play in a, one band before I die. I'd love to be in a band. If there's anybody in here that belongs to a band, will you just give give Doc a shot? Give yeah, him a just shot. One shot. I mean, just one gig. Because I have no rhythm that nobody would want to play with me. It's a rhythm problem. So but one gig. One gig. All you metronome. need. I'm working with my metronome. Only one gig. <laughs> and I want to. I want to do a solo lead part. I want to be a front man for just one time. And I can throw the performance picks out into the audience. That'd be my ultimate goal. You know, to throw your pick out and people are climbing all over each other trying to get your pick that you just, you know, just merge your axe with. That's a term that you may not, that's a, another cool term. You're actually laughing at me. Um, but I want to be known as an as axe murderer. 
you know, kind of like Jeff Beck, they call him the axe murderer because uh, <laughs> he murders his axe. You uh, uncool people are not going to understand that, but. Stanford I'm saying, what, what about Dr. Joe Smitty's band? Uh, Man, I'm not on that level. I mean, that's a different <laughs> level. I can't hang with him or any of his band. There's, Plus it's bluegrass. You know, I'm more rock. There's a. Uh, I'm sure there's like a really small window where, where you would, where you would be able to fit in. Uh, we'll keep looking. I'm working on it. You Guys, know. if y'all have, if y'all have suggestions for, uh, for bands for doc, let us, let us know. Um, Elena's, Elena's on her way home. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Elena, for, for joining us, uh, tonight, uh, and listening it to. It's great the, to see you today. Great to see you in the office. It was a great visit. She brought up a great point and, she was feeling great today. Just came in for a doctor visit. She said all doctor visits should be like this. We come in when we're well. You know, I that's what that. people forget about. And that was a great point. You know, and that's a pearl you could put on some of your posts that you do. People should come in to the doctor when they're feeling well and discuss a plan for their health care trajectory. Not just when they're sick and we're putting a Band-Aid on it, but come in here when you're well and We'll talk about things you're concerned about and things that I may point out that maybe you need to pay attention to. But um, people just don't come in as much for well visits. I get a lot more of those than probably any other doctor around here because I'm more of a preventative functional medicine doc who believes in wellness and prevention and natural therapies, including nutrition, um, when I can. So well, um, great, great shout, point. shout out to, to Elena there for, um, for that mindset. What an incredible mindset. Uh, I love the idea of, of going to, to the doctor when you're doing great and discussing what you want the next 10 years to look like, you know, which is, I know kind of the approach you take is, you know, you're looking at patients, you know, what are they going to, what are, what are they going to be like 10 years from now? And, and really, you know, focusing on that. Did I, did I say that right? Is that kind of how, mm -hmm. how you approach it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Trying to predict in 10 years, what you will feel like. Yeah. How are you going to be able to move? What your weight's going to be, what your hormones are going to be. Um, and positive attitude as well. I love yeah. that. Thank you, Elena, for, for being with us. Uh, Nichelle is asking, can weight loss help your liver enzymes numbers to come down? Yeah, good question. for sure. Great question. And yeah, for sure. You know, because a lot, we see a lot of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And uh, so, yeah, definitely. That's, that's the main thing that you want to do um, because non-alcoholic fatty liver disease uh, right is right behind cirrhosis in cause of liver cancer um so definitely you know if your lfts are up a little bit i saw two cases a day where they were they're mildly elevated and one of them i, I, I double checked it on the lab i bet they go down because he's lost a good amount of weight and there's no belly fat so he's probably his liver function tests are down uh it does if you throw up watch your drinking watch your alcohol to you know as well and look at the medicines you take. Some medications can cause uh, elevated liver functions like statins. Um, even Tylenol can do it. That's how Tylenol kills people. It shuts their liver down. It's a horrible thing. Hmm. Uh, it's a really great question. I actually haven't heard that analogy. Um, so thank you, uh, Nichelle, for, for putting that in there. Uh, great question. Uh, Motaz is saying that he, he's got a friend who is joining a band, uh, retiring and joining a band. Is that your Man. ambition? Man. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of is. I'm not going to retire. But, but, but Motaz says you can't retire. Yeah, I don't really don't have any plans on retirement <laughs> ever. But um, yeah, but jazz is, jazz is pretty cool type of music. I don't play jazz, you know. Jazz music is, what's the description of it? Um, what's well, like never ending. It's just like jamming all the time. Um, here's the definition of jazz music is that you have 
like 10,000 different notes and chords that you play for 10 people. Now with country or rock, you have three chords and 100,000 people. <laughs> Listen to it. In other words, nobody likes jazz. <laughs> It's, that, so, I have not heard that before. That's I that's hope I hope to play in a rock band, Motaz. No, <laughs> I don't want to, a jazz band. Let's get to Steven's question here. <laughs> All um, those are talented musicians, though. <laughs> uh, good evening, Dr. Rogers. How does GABA supplement compare to saffron and L-theanine to help with anxiety? I recently added GABA along with the saffron and L-theanine, and it's been a good addition. Uh, this is awesome. This is a great question. Yeah, I love both of those. It seems like I get a little better results from saffron. Either GABA works for you or it doesn't. Some people don't feel good on GABA. Um, some people, they feel great on GABA. It's more of a hit or miss thing than, that I found saffron to be. Saffron's great, too, for weight loss. That's originally what I started using saffron for. But saffron's pretty cool. You know, it works for acute anxiety as well. Acute. Hmm. Like, I'll take one before I get on a plane and, you know, won't even be nervous much. But um, so it really helps pretty acutely. Um, L-theanine is great, especially for mind chatter. You know, you can't go to sleep because you're thinking all this stuff. And I think it works good for that. Um, and you can take them together. Um, the Dr. Rogers stress formula has ashwagandha, L-theanine, and rhodiola all in one. And a lot of people like that one as well. I put that formula together myself through the Freedom Formulators in, in Oregon, who I hope to have a meeting with in Nashville over the holidays. Mm, yep. uh, I'm going to try to come out with some other good vitamins that um, so you don't have to take so many. Um, but another thing about music, Ben, that you probably don't know is like country music, I'm not really a country music player. I like rock music and maybe folk music, Americana. But all country music is really is three chords and the truth. You know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, actually. Three chords and the truth. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, give, give us the truth on, on glucose control here. Uh, for Stanford, uh, what are your thoughts on cinnamon for glucose control and high doses of metformin in uh, high, high doses, 4,000 milligrams per day? What's your thoughts on this? I like cinnamon and alpha lipoic acid for over-the-counter supplements. Although somebody today brought an article in from a doctor somewhere, Dr. Jillian, or I need to look at her podcast. I'm not sure what kind of doctor, but she does not like alpha lipoic acid supplements um but it seems like cinnamon and alpha lipoic acid really do help uh insulin resistance a lot so i recommend them using unless i find something new out i'm always learning different stuff so listen up but um i don't i have never found metformin that effective past 2000 milligrams per day personally of course that's supposed to be the top dose of it um, I know some people will push doses, but you know, you, you're going to probably have more GI upset and you have to watch your kidney function closer. But, um, I guess as long as you monitored things and see what's happening, I just haven't used it at uh, 4,000 milligram per day. I have no experience personally prescribing that high dose. Um, so, but I'm not against it as long as you, keep an eye on things and you, it doesn't bother you and uh, keep an eye on your renal function, your creatinine clearance and uh, see what it does. I know a lot of people will push doses of a lot of things way past their maximum recommended dose by the FDA. So, um, you know, as, as doctors got to be a little bit careful about yeah. doing too much of that. Um, you know, but, uh, Interesting. Follow up with me. And let me know how it's working for you if you're doing it. I'd like to know. I just haven't had anybody push it that high. Uh, Stanford, let us know about uh, about that dosing uh, with uh, with cinnamon there. Thank you so much for putting that in. Uh, let's get to Chuck's question. Uh, what are your thoughts on apple cider vinegar? I like it. You know, I have some in my 
fridge. You know, I, I forget to take a lot. One thing, my thoughts about it, you better dilute it when you swallow it because it's harsh on your throat. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they, gosh, what is my, I got one the other day that I haven't drank much of yet, but um, it's, it has something else in it. I think it has a little honey in it. That's what it has. So that'll, I love local honey. That's probably not local raw honey that it's in the, but I'll definitely add my own raw honey. But um, I like it. A lot of people think it cures anything. That may be stretching a little bit, but it's definitely good for your gut in most cases. Um, it helps gird a lot. Um, people claim it helps arthritis, and it may. You know, I certainly like it. There's there's just too much evidence and too, too many people that use it uh, to blow it off. Um, I don't care if there's not been any double-blinded placebo control trials on it. If something works and that many people think it works and take it, I'm all for it. Um, so, you know, some people even think it has a lot of anti-cancer effects, but certainly can't go claiming that. But it's a great product, I think. The mother, you know, it's it's just a good Braggs is a brand everybody gets. Yep. yep. Um, uh, Chuck, thank you for putting that in there. Great question. Um, here's from Judy. Um, how much vitamin D three do you recommend? Uh, why don't you just why don't you tell us um, under you know an everyday sort of dosage you like, as well as um, if people start to feel something coming on. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, especially in the winter time when you, your vitamin D levels are going to be low. Uh, I saw one today, her level was 12. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, most people need 5,000 of D, but some people may not need that much. Some people may need a lot more. So you got to check your levels in your blood to see where you're at and go from there. But I usually start out with 5,000. I like D with K. Mm -hmm. I like vitamin K2. Um, you know, it's K1, K2, um, and then the form of K2 like is called MK7. There's different, there's different forms of a lot of this stuff. And I like 180 milligrams of MK7 with your vitamin D3, not D2, D3. Um, but check levels. What the, what the vitamin K does is bring the, um, helps the vitamin D bring the calcium into your bones, not your joints or your arteries. So I, definitely any adult should be taking K, vitamin K2 with that. You know, the K1 is the one more responsible for blood clotting. K2 is not going to do that to you. Um, now, if you're on blood thinners, you got to watch it a little closer, even with the K2. But um, And if you get sick, immediately pop up um, your vitamin uh, D3 to 50,000 a day for three days. I've used, even used 150,000 a day. Um, yes, it's, you, could you get toxic on vitamin D? You could, you'd have to take a whole lot of it for a while. Uh, so for short-term use, you're not going to get toxic on it. At least I've never seen that. Main danger of D3 toxicity is, um, through babies, you know, getting way too much of it. And I've heard of that a few times. So you don't let your babies suck on those drops all day of vitamin D3. Uh, but I had, I had an interesting thing today. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are orthopedic surgeons and uh, a lot of them that do elective surgery will not operate on you unless your vitamin D level is 50 uh, or above. They, wow. they won't, they'll put it off. They won't do it. They'll send them to me to get the, you know, I have vitamin D3 shots, I am shots that I give. Plus, I saw one of my orthopedic doctor friends today that comes to see me, and he's real, he's really on top of things in advance, especially with the functional stuff. He's fantastic. I think I'm gonna get him to do a podcast with me someday. But anyway, he was saying that for his trauma, uh, people and people that need uh, emergency surgery, he'll pop them with three hundred to four hundred thousand units of it i mean a wow. real high dose you know acutely because they just heal better mm. and as you know with with uh certain recovering for certain viruses you need vitamin d3 you yeah. need, you'll avoid hospitalization if you've got a good level um, uh great stuff there um vitamin d3 is so important i, I think in 
uh, in today's uh, doctor's note, you said it's it's the most uh, important supplement you'll ever take. So it's a hormone, um, really. It's not even a vitamin. It's really a hormone. Yeah. Which means um, it has effects on other parts of your other organ systems. Uh, let's get to Terry here. Is the microalbumin creatinine ratio different for senior patients? Uh, if I mispronounce that, I apologize. Um, yeah, it is a little bit, but you know, you that's measuring your, um, well, you, you can measure your urine albumin protein is albumin. And for every diabetic, you need to, to check their urine for microalbumin to see if their kidneys are spilling protein. And the uh, creatinine ratio is at basically the function, how your kidneys are filtering. So, yeah, I mean, it gets a little less as you get older. There's no doubt your kidneys don't filter quite as good. So um, what may be optimal for a 20-year-old is going to be uh, – it's going to be less than that most likely, but, um, yeah, always, that's a good thing to keep an eye on, especially if you're a diabetic or have any form of kidney disease. Um, if you're spilling protein, so good, good question. I don't know off the top of my head. I can't give you the normal, uh, numbers for that, but, um, it's definitely going to be a little different for seniors. Like I'm a senior and I've seen mine change a little bit. Hmm. And the, uh, the, the creatinine levels also for it can be higher in people that lift a lot of weights and that have a lot of lean muscle mass. So a lot of times I'll see somebody that works out all the time that lifts heavy weights and their creatinine will be 1.5 or you start thinking, what in the world? Why do they have kidney problems? It's not a kidney problem. That's just normal for them. Hmm. Uh, Terry, thank you so much for that question there. Um, let's get to, to Trevor here. Uh, can you discuss some signs of vitamin A deficiency as well as some overlooked signs of vitamin C deficiency? Scurvy. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, <clears throat> usually fatigue, dry skin, um, your, your kidneys may not function as well. You tend to get sick a lot. Um, with both those, you can, you can start having visual problems with the vitamin A deficiency. Um, and, and really skin rashes is something I see a lot on that joint problems. Um, you need, you know, come in and get a vitamin. You know, we have a, a quest panel now that's pretty, uh, cheap to get. Um, I think we can have three or four different panels depending on how far you want to take it. But I think one of them is just like $125 to get a lot of your vitamin levels checked besides the one that the Cleveland's going to check. You know, Cleveland's going to check um, vitamin D, of course, but also CoQ10, B12, folate. Um, but, you know, if you want to, if you want to get the, the copper and the vitamin A and the vitamin C levels, um, Magnesium is also, or RBC magnesium, which is more accurate than the one on the Cleveland, which is just a serum magnesium. Really, the RBC magnesium is much more accurate. Um, so come in and get that that blood vitamin test. It's not expensive and really tell you a lot about where you're at. You know, your zinc levels, your copper levels, you know, um, vitamin A and copper have a lot. They, they go hand in hand. And they have a lot to do with your iron levels as well. Like a lot of people that have really low ferritin levels, um, yet you look and they have a really low ferritin level and they're not anemic. Um, they really may not need more iron. You may be doing them a disservice. You really at least ought to check their vitamin panel because they may be deficient in copper and vitamin A. Hmm. So that's, that's something I'm going to do a podcast on pretty soon because there's a lot of stuff I never knew about um, how copper and vitamin A interact with iron metabolism. Um, you know, it's pretty typical for docs to look at a low ferritin level. Do you need more iron if they're not anemic? And, you know, too much iron can sludge your blood up. So it may be that having a fairly low ferritin level just means you're utilizing your iron better. So I'll do a podcast on that on someday. A lot of the stuff, you know, I'm just kind of digesting now. So, um, 
Uh, it seems uh, Trevor got a Cleveland uh, here a while back uh, and is going to do the uh, buying. Oh, and great. Sorry. Wonderful. The Cleveland's the best way to start. It's just a great all around test to let me know, you know, where you're at with a lot of your stuff, like your hormones, your inflammatory markers, which are many, your some vitamin levels, uh, of course, your hormones, your the size of your cholesterol particles, um, your adrenals, your complete thyroid panel, liver, kidney. I mean, it's just a wonderful way to start. And then you add a, a vitamin panel soon and look a little bit further, especially if you don't, you know, feel a little bit off, you're tired, you know, you get sick more often or you hurt a little more frequently than come in and get that vitamin panel as well, especially if the Cleveland's not giving us any clear cut answers. Uh, thank you for, for that, Trevor. It's a great question. Uh, Care Bear 68 on YouTube is saying, if we bump up vitamin D due to illness, do we need to up the K2 as well? No, question. great question. No, um, go ahead and take your normal dose of K2, you know, like 180, it's or vitamin D with K, 5,000, and then the rest of it, just do pure vitamin D3. Okay. Great question. I try to tell people that, but sometimes, you know, they don't hear me or I forget maybe, but great uh, question. Thank you for uh, for putting that in there so we could clarify. Uh, great question. Um, let's see if I missed anybody. If I've missed a question, uh, I apologize. Uh, man, uh, <laughs> We have a lot of great questions tonight. We have. This has been. Oh, uh, Elena's asking, "What brand do you recommend?" Uh, Elena, what um, what vitamin are we talking about? Um, let's see here, Elena. If you're still with us, uh, go ahead and uh, tell me what vitamin, and we'll try to get you a brand. Um, and then Elena said, "Dr. Janine." That's. I think that was. Uh, you yeah. Referred to. Yeah. 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 Um, I, look her, I haven't looked her podcast up yet. All. That's the one that. Not big hip on lipoic acid, but we'll see. We'll, I'll look at that. Uh, Katie's got a country song lyric for us. Uh, if you listen to country music backwards, to get you get your house back, your wife back, and your dog back. That, Man. that sounds like that's country music in a wow. In a, that's that's <laughs> even better than that. Three chords in the truth. I didn't know that. That's a, that's, that's pretty a, good. That's country music in a line right there. How about your uh, gun? Do you get your gun back too? Or uh, let's see here. Steven's saying. Buy a vintage Martin guitar. It will solve the winter blues. Man, that it. is a great. You know, I'm thinking about that, Stephen. I'm I'm either, but I'm hedging between the Gibson J45 or the Martin D28. I don't know your suggestions on that, but um, you know, I know the Martin has a bigger sound. The Gibson may be a little bit better on the, you know tremolos and things and i don't know but that's a big question i can't afford to get both of them and you're talking vintage i'm even talking new when, you, when you're talking vintage martin guitar you know that's above my pay grade you know i wish i you know i wish i had the kind of money to get a vintage what, what does vintage mean in the guitar world is that like a oh, like something well that, 50s famous... 60s uh that means old just like uh, pianos, they they tend to the sound gets better with age. There's there's just probably the most coveted guitar that I know about. It's a '59 Les Paul electric guitar. But um, Motaz is is wanting a um, a clip of of some guitar playing. I think we okay. can work that. Let's uh, work that up next week. I may I've been working on a couple new songs. I may maybe next week. <laughs> I want to play a little riff for you, maybe. It won't be a complete song. I'm not good on complete songs, but I'm great on riffs, you know, part of a song. Uh, do we have do we have Dr. Ike getting ready? Is he is he around? Yeah, he's, he's kind of sleepy. He was up here a um, minute ago. Elena. Oh, okay, so Elena's asking brand of vitamins that uh, <clears throat> that you recommend for most. Uh, I'd say uh, life, life extension. extension. Yeah, life extension. Hey, maybe if I offer this. You know, I tempt Ike with this, he'll come up here. I'm not going to let him have it because actually the first experimental bread of the break, he got the whole thing and drug it off the counter and ran down the basement with it. Ike, <laughs> Ike, treat, treat. He's not enticed by the, yeah, he's by the sourdough. He's just tired. He was sleeping. 
This is cold to be to do this to him, but that is kind of cold. Yeah, look at that. He loves That's the smell rude. of it. He loves the smell of it. That's rude, Doctor Ike. What's going on, man? He's looking good. He is looking good. He's really. He got in the mud the other day, but he's trying to wave to you. <laughs> Hi, Doctor Ike. He loves smells that good, doesn't it? Smells good, doesn't it? He loves that sourdough. I don't feed him off the table. Uh, so. Well, Doc, any any parting any parting words before we call it a show? I don't have any words of wisdom. I hope everybody's getting in the Christmas spirit. You know, we finally had the sun come through today, so yep. that was good. Took a walk at lunch. Ernie and I did, uh, and Katie went with us. So yep. we had a great time. And you know, get out and walk. Get out and enjoy. You can you can walk in any kind of weather. Don't let that be an excuse. It's too cold or rainy outside. You know, you can go out and walk. Sometimes if it's terrible, Ernie and I'll go to the mall. You know, we'll join the other senior citizens with mall walking. And believe it or not, we're probably the youngest people in there. <laughs> uh, guys, get out there and walk uh, no matter the weather. Uh, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us tonight. This has been the Performance Medicine Show. We do this every single Tuesday from 7 to 8. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for being in the comments and, uh, and getting us all the information mom behind the scenes. Thank you for being with us yeah, this you. evening. Uh, we had Robin Riddle, our nurse practitioner in Knoxville with us tonight. Thank you, Robin, for, uh, hanging out with us. Uh, thank you to all the performance medicine team for all the hard work you guys are doing, uh, inside of the office, uh, this week and, and all year, uh, to all my regulars, uh, here tonight that are with us every single week. We love you. Thank you for being with you. Uh, thank you for being with us. These questions drive the show. So we really do appreciate it. Uh, we will be back next week, uh, Tuesday at seven o'clock. Uh, real quick, if you do want to be involved or get into uh, nutrition coach Lucas Schmidt's holiday classes, he's got one more left. Uh, tomorrow is sold out, but uh, December 21st, I, I still think there's some spots. So make sure you call the Johnson City office if that's something that you want to do. Uh, guys, I'm out. We out? Hey, man. All right, where's my outro? Where's my outro? I love you guys. We'll see you next week, next Tuesday, 7 p.m. We'll be there. Love you. Don't go away.